So glad that you're long for the ride. I already met someone uh, that's never been to Wednesday night prayer, so so thrilled that you're uh, taking that step in your journey with the Lord. And of course, if you are not new to the church, you know that this has been a part of our rhythm from the very beginning. And we always say that Sunday starts on Wednesday. Yeah, so we, we always kind of start preparing ourselves and preparing this place for what God is going to do on uh, the weekend. And just to kind of give you a lay of the land, for those of you that are, that are first timers to, to Wednesday night prayer, obviously we started with some worship. Aren't you thankful for our worship team and all that they do? And yeah, aren't they great? Yeah, just the best. And uh, so that just kind of prepares our hearts. We walk in here with lots of things and lots of stress. And so that just prepares our hearts. And I share a little bit of word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So we just kind of build our faith a little bit there. And that kind of points us to our focus of prayer for the evening. And we either would do a model of prayer or we would do a uh, so kind of a template or just something that kind of focuses where our prayer needs to go for, for the night. I'm going to teach out of Psalm 89 tonight, and we're going, to, we're going to learn about the attributes of the anointing of God on your life. So out of Psalm 89, I cannot wait to teach that to you. And then after I teach for about 15 minutes, I'm going to release you all to pray on your own. You'll pray on your own for about 20 minutes, and uh, they'll play some worship music. And during that time, I always like to take communion during that time. I take communion every, every week during that time. It's available for you up front here. But then I just want to make a couple of, of announcements in, in amongst all that's happening here in the life of the church. I'll let you guys kind of get to the order in which I do these announcements. I'll, I'll leave you guys in control back there because I'm already uh, just kind of doing it out of order in my own head. Um, we have 21 days of prayer starting on this weekend, everybody. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So... Um, Part of that are the prayer request cards that were on uh, the seats when you walked in here tonight, and there's some more up here at the front. So during our prayer time, if you have a prayer request, how many would like someone joining in, in prayer and in their faith with you over the next 21 days? I just know that I, I would. So fill out a prayer request card. You can be as specific as you want, and then I, I'm guaranteeing that every day several people will be praying over that card specifically because we'll start with 6 a.m. prayer on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we keep 7 p.m. for all my Wednesday night, but you are my favorite people right here, so um, we're going to keep that in intact. So just know that 21 days starts on Sunday. And then we've got uh, the prayer request cards. Do that during our prayer time. We've got resources available to you. And then let me just say this. Um, for those of you that are newer to the life of the church, or maybe you've kind of been kicking the tires, Sunday is also New Here Lunch. So we have that immediately following third service, which is also one of my favorite things that we do around here. And uh, you can register for that in advance. And then finally, let me just mention, if you don't know, it's the end of the month. So New Soap Guide starts tomorrow, everybody. So Soap Guides... Uh, we read a chapter a day, and we cover uh, those chapters in the, the messages on Sunday, and then you're reading more deeply through them uh, throughout the week, and we're starting our series on the Holy Spirit on Sunday. So how many, anyone else excited about that? Okay, we're excited about that. Okay, so I'm going to start in Psalm 89. I'll let you guys start, get me started, and then, then we'll be off and running. Psalm 89 says this, I have raised up a young man from among the people. I have found David, my humble servant. With my sacred oil, I have anointed him. Now, never forget, it is God who raises up, okay? And he's looking for humble servants. It is God who anoints. And he then is going to list seven attributes that are the result of the anointing of God being on him. Now, um, before we get into that, I, I just... I'm looking down here at some of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Um, as you guys know, Pastors Matt and Sarah Keller, they lead the Next Level Relational Network. And uh, the last couple days, Ashley and I have had the thrill of hosting some of the pastors that are in the region that we get to lead, and we lead groups. And they're all kind of sitting up here, all these pastors. So I'll, I'll give, let me just give you, give, give me just, I'll give you the, the states and where they're at r real quick. So we have Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and St. Louis. We still have our Tanzanian Pastor Rogers is here. Kenton, Ohio. Elyria, Lorraine, Ohio. And then Rogers, Arkansas. Come on, all my friends, stand up and let them greet you. Come on, stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up. Come on, let them know how much you love them. That's awesome. Yeah, there's my friends. And hey, you're not sitting with it. And Waterloo, Indiana, everybody. Right there, there's Adam Neal. Okay, yeah. You just wanted your own thing. I know you. I know how you are. All right. Okay, let's go back to my text now. You guys ready? So then he gives them these attributes. I'll, I'll read through them and then we're going to break them down. What's going to happen when the anointing of God comes on you? My hand will sustain him. Surely my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not get the better of him. The wicked will not oppress him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. How many are liking the anointing of God already? My faithful love will be with him, and through my name his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand over the sea, his right hand over the rivers. 
He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, my rock, my savior, and I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth, and I will maintain my love to him forever, and my covenant with him will never fail. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as long as the heavens endure. Now, that's the result of the anointing of God coming on his life. Now, I think to some of you, you might say, well, that's because that's David, and he was the man after God's own heart. But that, here's the problem with that. First John chapter 2 says that you're anointed. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Let me try it again. Here's the problem with that. First John chapter 2 says that you are anointed, everybody. You have an anointing on your life, and you know the truth. Watch this. The anointing you received from him remains on you. So now, now the seven attributes are available to you. Because the same power that raised Christ from the dead now resides inside of you. And his anointing, the spirit of God, the hand of God is on you. So let's go back to Psalm 89. What's available to me? Watch what he says. My hand will sustain him. Surely my arm will strengthen him. You have strength and health because of the anointing of God on your life. David would say in 2 Samuel, you have armed me with strength for the battle. Now how many know you're in a battle? (laughs) Which is why you need the anointing of God on your life. He would say this in Psalm 92, your anointing has made me strong and mighty. You've empowered my life for triumph by pouring fresh oil over me. Now, you know, the oil of God is always representative of the spirit of God. For in your presence, they will still overflow. So that's the anointing, the oil of God. They will still overflow and be anointed. And even in their old, where's my mature people at right there? Even in their old age. They will stay fresh, full of oil, bearing luscious fruit, and abiding faithfully. Right there. All because the anointing of God resides on my life. God always intended as an indicator of his anointing operating in and on my life, strength and might and health and life and vitality. So I can walk tomorrow going, I am anointed by God. I am strengthened by God. You don't have to walk into environments cowering. No, you have the anointing of God. That's a promise. From God's word. Okay, back to Psalm 89. That's just the first one. We got six more. Here we go. And the enemy will not get the better of him, and the wicked will not oppress him. I need the, anyone else need the supernatural protection of God <laughs> on your life? Anyone else ready for the anointing of God that provides his protection? Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you. From the evil one. Why? Because the anointing of God, the spirit of God, rests on my life. Back to Psalm 89. And I will, cr- now we really like, now I'm really liking the anointing right here. And I will crush his foes <laughs> and strike down his adversaries. I have defense and victory by the power of God that resides on my life. Now, how many know we have a real enemy? So I just want to remind you don't be naive. Fight in the war that you're in. And how do I fight? I use the name that is above every other name. I use the name of Jesus, that every demon in hell trembles at the name of Jesus. Any, anyone tired of the enemy winning in people's lives? Any, like, I'm just, I'm tired of watching the enemy overcoming people. I'm tired of watching marriages get devoured. I'm tired of families getting devoured. I'm, t- I'm tired of church kids acting like the rest of the world. I'm tired of the enemy winning in people's lives. And I have defense and victory because the anointing of God rests in and on my life. And here's the good news. Jesus has already won the victory. So I don't have to fear destruction because God promises he's with me. He will protect me. He is Jehovah Nisi. Literally means my, means my defense. Watch, it means he is a banner of victory being waved over my life before I even go into the battle. I'll get this vision now. Before you even walk into that battle, God's already waving the battle. Back up, Satan. They've already won. They're already the victor in Jesus' name. This is the reality of what you need to start walking in. Why? Because the anointing of God rests on my life. David would say it this way, you prepare a table before me right in the presence of my enemies, which means while my enemies are trying to pick a fight, he says, why don't you just sit down and have me chill out? I'll take care of that. <laughs> Anyone else grateful for that right there? Oh, what's that mean? He's my defense. So let me just set some of you off the hook. You don't have to defend yourself. God is your defense. I have somebody who's my defender that's waving a banner over my life. 
I love what Amy Carmichael says. She says, we follow in procession behind a triumphant Christ. And if all our reliance is placed upon him, we need never be defeated in spirit today. From hour to hour, he can and will lead us on to triumph if we just look to him, friends. Psalm 89, what's available to my life because the anointing of God rests on my life? Let's go back to it. My faithful love will be with him. And through my name, his horn will be exalted. I have favor and blessing on my life because the anointing of God rests on it. Look with favor upon your anointed one. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and blessing. No good thing does he withhold. Watch this now. There's a caveat. So if the anointing of God is on your life and these attributes are available to your life, why don't you go ahead and walk blamelessly to keep it on your life? So you're going to have to do some things to protect the anointing that's on your life. Wholeness, innocence, purity. And I'll just tell you really quickly what that looks like in my own own life that means I wake up and I just submit my whole life to him I submit as a living sacrifice I present my body pleasing acceptable to the Lord my eyes my ears my hands my feet my mouth take captive the thoughts of my mind oh God wouldn't you love to have more of the anointing and presence of God on your life well I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna have to do but I'm not gonna tell you how you're gonna do it What you're going to have to do is grapple with and figure out and put a gate and decide what you're going to allow into this right here. So I'm telling you what you're going to have to do. And you're thinking, well, just tell me where the line is, Devin. I, I know where the line is that the Holy Spirit has told me. And you have a Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And he wants to anoint you. See, the problem is we want people to hear the Holy Spirit for us now. And you have a Holy Spirit inside of you that wants to speak to you, that wants to lead you, that wants to go, I wouldn't do that. Oh, mm, uh, he's in you. But you're going to have to submit to that, and you've got to let him talk to you. So I put a plate over my mind, holy as unto the Lord. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. That means I'm set apart. That means I'm a chosen people. I'm a royal priesthood. That my life is declaring something to the world that he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I I have this favor and this blessing. And maybe you hear that and you're like, well, that sounds like legalism to me, Devin. I'm not talking about your salvation. It's a free gift. I'm talking about protecting and cultivating the anointing of God on your life. It's a choice you got to make. Back to Psalm. Do you love Psalm 89 already? All right. I got just a few minutes left and we're going to go to prayer. And I will set his hand over the sea, his right hand over the rivers. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. And I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted of kings of the earth. I have authority and influence in the name of Jesus because I carry the anointing of the spirit of God on my life. Hey, did you know that God wants to give you influence? Did you know that? That he wants to set your hand over some things. That he wants to appoint you to some things. Why? So that his name will be glorified in your life. And this is part of walking in the anointing of God. And I will maintain my love to him. My covenant with him will never fail. I have the unconditional love of God. Because of the anointing of God that's available to me. And he passed in front of Moses. Proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. Slow to anger. Come on, say this. Abounding in love. Aren't you grateful that he lavishes his unfailing love? Thousands of generations. You know, in the Old Testament, the most important phrase in worship was um, the love, the hesed, unconditional love of the Lord that endures forever. His love endures forever. Speaks of a covenant love. Jesus said this cup represents the new covenant, his unfailing love finally, and I will establish his line forever, (laughs) his throne as long as the heavens. You got the anointing of God on your life, you have generational blessing. So now it's not only available to you, but to your children and your children's children. Psalm 103, and then we're going to go to prayer. 
Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other, unbroken, unrelenting toward those who fear you and those who bow face down in awe before you. Your faithfulness to keep every gracious promise that you've made passes from parents to children. Come on, somebody. To grandchildren. To beyond. Come on, say these three words out loud. You are To all those who follow your ways and keep your word. Hey, listen, you're anointed. And because you're anointed, this is available to your life. And we're going to pray through it together co- corporately. I-, I want you to pray through it on your own. I w- take some communion. Fill out a prayer request card on your own. They're going to play some worship music. We'll pray for about 20 minutes. And then I'm going to come back and model it for you and show you how you can implement that prayer in your life. Let's pray.